What is up my beautiful people? It is Adamo back on IFTV and today I'll be giving you guys a little bit of rumor recap. Won't be the longest of videos because there hasn't been much news going around the city yeah, today, but whatever there is, I will piece together and give to you guys in this video. And I'm sure you guys have noticed if you follow us on these social of medias, if you don't, go do it because it's just just what you gotta do, you know? It's the IFTV grind. But I'm sure you would've seen that Marco and Mike are out in Boston working with Juve and Roma, coming up clutch with that six hour drive or whatever it is from New York to Boston. Freaking haul those guys did just for you guys to get the great content. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of it. But as I said, we'll be piecing together the rumors going on today. And it seems to be mostly based around the two Milanese teams. Uh, you know, at least for the day, we've seen in the Mercato overall that AC Milan have been dominating the Mercato out of all the teams, mainly even in Europe, I guess you could say. I mean, they rebuilt practically a whole new 11, so not too shabby. Alonso, if I do say so myself, but there has been some internews being sled in there a little bit and a bit from Sassuolo and Palermo, of course. But let's start off with Valencia as they are interested in Inter's Morillo and obviously the center back, not too bad. He's been... You know, pretty decent at Inter, but they have had some shaky years, so he wouldn't, you know, hasn't been able to perform to his best of abilities. But Inter do not want to let him go out on a dry loan at all. They don't even want to think about anything like that. But if they were to sell him, his price would stand around somewhere at 14 to 15 million euros for Valencia, which isn't too bad of a deal. I'm pretty sure they'd be making a profit. I'm not too sure. Leave in the comments down below if they would be. Fact check me on that. I'm not 100 percent but I think if Inter can get some money from this, it will allow them to spend even more, which is why I think that, you know, if they can get a good price from Manchester United for Perisic, and they should definitely take it because they need that open window to be able to spend money under Spalletti because I think he needs the team that he wants at Inter. This is no longer the team of the old coaches from the past, and I think that he should have a fair chance. So, you know, if they could go through with this deal, I personally would do it. I think he's had a couple shaky years. And you certainly need to get rid of the dead wood that's been going on at Inter that are plagued with whatever poison has been put in their food from uh, these past few years that have made them underperform for whatever reason. But also with Inter, obviously this is all from Di Marzio. They could be crossing paths with PSG in this window as the club wants João Mario, of course. Pretty decent Portuguese accent if I do say so myself. But anyways... Inter also want Serge Aurier, the player that Juve have been linked to but weren't able to snag up, I believe for passport reasons and citizenships and all that sort of stuff. But he's the great right back from PSG that has seemed to be replaced from the former Napoli target, I believe his name is Mounier, something along those lines, from Belgium. Great, great right back, but uh, that doesn't undermine Aurier's ability. I think he's also a fantastic player, so if Inter could snap him up, I mean, I wouldn't recommend getting rid of Joe Mario, even though he didn't have the best of seasons as well as Murillo. I still think that he has more potential as a player to become something great. We saw with the Euros, he was great with Portugal and, uh, you know, with the other clubs that he's played at, I believe it was Sporting. Uh, you know, he really showcased what he's capable of. And I think if Inter let him go, it would be a mistake. But if they can get a player like Aurier, it wouldn't be too shabby. Alonso, now on to AC Milan as Torino are back in the race from Mumbai Niang, the legend himself, the guy, I say it time and time again, who missed against Barcelona. It was, uh, it was rough. It was a rough day for me. And, uh, you know, so rough that it makes me do such a terrible Spanish accent. But Gazeta are claiming that Torino are back in the race for the player and that, uh, you know, they're returning. We're trying to reunite him with Mihailovic back at Torino, which I think would be a good move for him. As a player, I think, you know, he needs to get a new surrounding. Maybe leaving Milan would be best for him. Um, you know, obviously we've seen him on loan going to the likes of Genoa where he performed a bit better than he did at Milan. Uh, personally, as a Milan fan, I would keep him at the club. I think he's a great depth player. I think that he can, you know, play along the front line and give you a lot of, you know, quality in certain games. Obviously, he can't perform at the highest level when you need him to. But if you were to go to Torino, I think it would be a good move for them as well because it looks like I'm saying every deal is a good move, but... You know what I'm trying to say. But, you know, if you were to go with Torino under Mihailovic, I feel like they would get more out of him than we would at Milan because, you know, I think you need to involve him more in the squad rather than having him be a substitute. I don't think he'll be willing to fight for a spot uh, as hard enough as other players. But on to the likes of Sassuolo and Palermo, as I mentioned. 
They are doing some deals as Sassuolo have picked up Goldaniga and Marsan from Palermo. Arsi Marsan is the goalkeeper. Pretty young. I don't know too much about him. I haven't seen him play much, but I do know he's got a bit of potential to him. And uh, I think that, you know, going forward, I don't think he's going to be somebody who's starting for Sassuolo. But, you know, it's just a pickup that, you know, is necessary that you would do. But Goldaniga, I remember him being pretty good for Palermo. As long as you consider that, you know, they did get relegated with one of the worst teams in the city. Yeah, much like Pickford in Sunderland, you know, he's playing for a terrible team, so you can't really expect much from him, but you can see the quality. I see the same sort of thing with Goldaniga. I don't think he'll be some world-class Italian center back. Obviously, he's only 23 years old, but I do think that with Sassuolo, that they can, you know, make something out of the player and, you know, maybe he'll get some good minutes. I mean, they have some great players in that squad. Obviously, they are no joke, but losing their coach, Di Francesco, they're going to have to make some adjustments. And I think that, you know, this player can bring maybe something along the lines of what they're looking for. But anyways, that has been the video. It's been a little bit short notice. I know the lighting isn't the greatest. I'm sure the audio isn't the best, not the longest of videos, you know, but... We gotta give you guys the content. We gotta give you guys the content. That's exactly what I'm doing here today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for the other content that will be coming on IFTV. I promise it'll be much better than this. But there's some great, great, great stuff going on with Juve and Roma that we're so fortunate to be able to cover. So make sure you check all that out. Anyways, it has been a demo from IFTV. And as usual, peace out.